Hey, Cookies here. I wanted to try a sort of new style of video. Um, just quickly talking about our various talent options. And with these, you know, Dragonflight talent trees compared to the older talent trees in previous expansions, we just have a lot more things, a lot more clutter, I guess you could say. And a lot, it's a lot harder to differentiate like what we actually want to swap or what we can swap. Um, so I'm going to be specifically talking about Mythic Plus in this video. And yeah, we're just going to talk about the different talents that, at least when I play, I think about switching and sometimes I mess around with. And the ones that, you know, I never touch and stuff like that. Um, the biggest thing is that I do not know all the answers or options yet. I'm still learning. I'm still kind of uh, playing. I basically just watch people who are better than me. And then on top of that, I just mess around with the talents that I see fit to mess around with. And then... Uh, I pretty much go from there and build, you know, preferences and opinions on all that stuff. Um, so yeah, let's uh, jump right into it. So this is probably going to be what you see as like the default build. If you look up like on Wowhead or Icy Veins or these, you know, the written guides, this is probably the talent tree that you'll see for Mythic Plus. It may be slightly different here and there, but this is the general idea of what you'll see. So moving from this talent tree... Um, I guess we'll start with just the general tree first, and then we'll move into the rest of specific stuff. So the first thing is we're going to talk about what areas are flexible in the tree. <clears throat> and then what points are flexible in the tree. And what I mean by that is there's certain areas in the tree where we might shift to different things for different benefits. And then there's certain talent points that aren't necessarily needed that we can kind of put wherever we want. Um... So starting off with, I guess it'd be easier to start off with the talent points that we can kind of put wherever we want. And that's pretty much going to be, I would say, Innervate and Ursul's Vortex. These two talent options right here, they're not really necessary. Vortex is definitely useful in a lot of keys and stuff like that. But for the most part, you really don't need these two talents whatsoever. So these two you can free up and do other things with. So again, Vortex can be really useful for certain affixes or certain dungeons um, where there might be mobs that charge out or jump away or things like that. So like off the top of my head, I'm thinking Black or Cold and Atal Bazaar. Um, and then Innervate, I find most useful if you find yourself struggling on mana, and that would pretty much be on Tyrannical Weeks. On Fortified Weeks, you really shouldn't run into an issue with this. Um, it might be nice so that you don't have to drink as much, but you just drink between pulls, and it pretty much you know it removes the need for Innervate. So the only time I would take Innervate is on basically Tyrannical Weeks, where the bosses are going to take an extended period of time, and I feel like I might run out of mana. So with these two talent points, we can do whatever we want with them. Um, there's some, uh, let's talk about like the different, I guess it will work down the tree just to make it easier. So the first thing is depending on the affix that's present this week. So for instance, this week it is uh, incorporeal and spiteful. So right off the top of my head, I'm thinking I need hibernate. So that gets rid of one point because we need hibernate for incorporeal. And then the second talent point, I usually personally put it into this improved rejuvenation. Again, this isn't a necessary talent, but it's really nice to not have to press rejuve as much, especially if I'm wanting to do things like cat weave and whatnot. So I try to always have a talent point in here, which means that my flexible point is now in hibernate. So that means I could take, you know, vortex, maybe if it's spiteful, of course, it's spiteful and incorporeal this week. So that kind of mixes things up a bit um, or those certain dungeons, like I mentioned, um, or we might take things like Curse to Spell if we want that. Um, but those are pretty much the how I would you know move this talent point around. Um, and then I think the last thing that I've seen some people do for really high keys is they get rid of this point in Well Honed Instincts, which just gives you like a frenzied regen when you reach a certain HP. And they'll instead now take these two points that they have available and put them in Ursine Vigor, which just makes it to where when you switch into Bear Form, you get a lot more HP, which can be, you know, really beneficial for a lot of mechanics that are going to one shot you and stuff like that. And then, you know, if we wanted to run two points in Ursine Vigor, but we need Hibernate for Incorporeal, we could just take out Improved Rejuvenation and go from there. So hopefully that's not too confusing. Basically, your flexible points are right here, Innervate, Ursul's Vortex, and Well Honed Instincts. You can pretty much move these three points around to whatever talents you feel like you need. So we'll just put those back into their default places for now. 
And then from here, the other important talent choices that you need to make is basically, do you want to be more offensive in your keys where you deal more damage and do things like cat weaving? Or would you like to be more defensive and focus on survivability and just making sure that you don't die to you know certain things? If you don't feel yourself finding availability to go into cat form often enough, then you can still cat weave without these talents that we're about to change, which is basically just this left row right here that goes straight down. We're basically just going to take all of these cat form talents. So we have like Primal Fury. We have Skull Bash, which is an interrupt. We have Killer Instinct, which increases our physical damage and armor. And then we have Improved Swipe and Thrash. We can take all of those out. And then we just go down this side of the tree right here, which is the bear form ability. So we have improved bark skin, increases the duration of bark skin. We have frenzied regen and bark skin, uh, increase all healing received while they're active. We have iron fur, which isn't something we'll be pressing. It's just something that, you know, gets us further down the tree. Then we take thick hide, two points in it, which reduces our damage taken by 6%. Then we take Matted Fur, which makes it, it gives us an absorb every time we press Bark Skin. And then now we have all these defensives options. And we can still Cat Weave. We can still press Rake. We can still press Shred. Um, and we can still press Rip, which is basically single target abilities. So this is what I would say is like the defensive options in your talent tree. And then our offensive options is just again going back down this Cat Weaving row. And then we can mix it up a little bit. So now we can do maybe a little bit of half and half because it does break off right here. So we could take, you know, instead of taking Primal Fury, which gives us extra combo points, we could just take Matted Fur. Now we have, you know, all the cat form abilities. We have an interrupt, but we also get a little bit of an absorb shield with our uh, survival instincts and our, um, our, our, our bark skin. <clears throat> um, and then let's say we want... You know, maybe we still want to do AOE damage in cat form, but we need thick hide. We want that damage reduction that thick hide provides, and we don't find ourselves pressing our interrupt enough. So we get rid of interrupt, we get rid of killer instinct, and then we just go down the tree right here. And now we have all of the cat weaving abilities we want. We do a little bit less damage because we don't have killer instinct and primal fury, but now we go down this tree and we have all these nice defensive, op defensive options. So that is the general tree. Um, hopefully I explained it easily enough to make it understandable. Um, and there are other points you can move around, um, but that is the gist of it. So for like this week, this is the talent setup that I'm running for Spiteful and Incorporeal. And then now we'll go ahead and look at our actual restoration tree. So in the actual restoration tree, um, when you start out, when you look at Wowhead or Icy Veins, the build might look something like this where you have this point in improved regrowth, and then it'll look something like this, where we have photosynthesis, um, and then we have undergrowth, which is two life blooms at once, and then adaptive swarm. Those are like our main things. So our first thing is when we get our four set in our four piece of tier set in season three of Dragonflight, this point in regrowth, a lot of people are moving it um, over to here to Tranquil Mind, which gives us uh, more chances to proc Omen of Clarity and our clear casting, and then also gives us, lets us sit on an extra stack of clear casting, which clear casting is like what our whole four piece basically relies upon and utilizes. So having this is really nice just so that we get to utilize that four piece even more, which is really, really effective for Mythic Plus. Okay. So now let's go ahead and talk about our kind of flexible talent options and stuff like that. So the very first thing that I'll probably talk about is um, this talent right here, Budding Leaves. It just increases our Life Bloom's healing by quite a bit. But if we find ourselves lacking on Life Bloom, or maybe we just want some extra burst healing because this is more just kind of sustained healing over the course of the whole dungeon, um, you can actually take this point out and put it into Reforestation right here which just makes it to where every three casts of Swift Mend, you get Tree of Life, which is a huge, you know, heal because you're spamming, you're able to spam regrowths, and uh, I think it makes you more tanky, it gives you armor, and it increases all your healing done uh, by 15% for that duration. So it's definitely more healing throughput, so if you feel like you're struggling on maybe like Tyrannical or even Fortified where there's, you know, Bursting or something like that, this can be a really, really nice talent. Um, 
The default will be here though, but again, this talent point is basically, you can move it where you want, but generally I wouldn't see where else you would put it besides re 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 reforestation. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, and then the next thing is there are not too many other options to move things around, um, but there is like liveliness right here, this choice node. So you have liveliness, which just makes it to where all your heal and damage over time effects uh, occur faster and happen faster. So it's just more effective healing on your dots and hots. And then we can switch this to Master Shapeshifter, which basically will just make it to where we do more damage in cat form and boomkin form. So that's going to be like, if we want to just focus on doing damage, you would probably do this. And I think this is more single target focused um, because this still increases our damage done because it increases all of our dots and hots, which means like our rake, our thrash, our rips, our moonfire, sunfire, all those do damage faster. So I think this is better for AOE, but if say it's tyrannical and you just want to help kill the bosses a lot faster, then Master Shapeshifter is probably a better option, though it doesn't get swapped around too much. But again, this is one of those talents that I kind of mess around with on certain weeks if I'm doing like lower tyrannical keys and I just want to kind of compare and contrast and see how it feels, I'll kind of I'll swap to this sometimes. And then the other choice node talent that we'll swap sometimes is uh, Flourish and Verdant Infusion over here. So Flourish is going to be really good for AoE healing, and it's also a very short cooldown, so it's really nice because it's always up. You can kind of alternate basically on bosses. You can alternate between Convoke and Flourish. Um, so say a boss mechanic is coming up that's going to do damage to the whole group. You press Convoke for the first one, heal everybody through it. And then say the next one happens in 30 seconds. Well, now you can press flourish, heal everybody through it. And then it happens in 30 seconds again. Well, now convokes back off cooldown. So you like almost with convoke and flourish combined, you almost always have something available to help you get through those hard healing checks in some of the dungeons. But there are a few dungeons where I think Verdant Infusion is really useful. So what it does is just makes it to where Swiftman doesn't need to consume a hot to be used. And then also it extends all of the heal over time effects on that person that you swift mended by 12 seconds, which is a lot. That's that. I mean, that's almost the cooldown of swift mend itself. So it, like you're almost infinitely extending hots on people, <clears throat> um, though it is single target. So you have to basically think about does this dungeon require more AOE healing or is there specific healing checks that require single target healing? So the dungeons off the top of my head, if I'm just looking at them really quick, is going to be things like um this is where it gets tricky because in every dungeon there's almost always aoe healing to do but there are certain dungeons where single target healing might be useful so something like a taldazar for instance where we have razan and yasma they both do really heavy single target damage while the other two bosses do really heavy aoe so maybe if we're struggling on like that tank dot that's on razan or the racking pain on Yasma, then Verdant Infusion could be more useful. And then we also have stuff like, um, let's say, Darkheart Thicket is definitely a dungeon that's pretty much almost exclusively single target. So you have like the first boss who does the bleed on a, uh, the furthest player away. So Verdant Infusion can be really useful on them. And then you have Oakheart, which he does like the tank breath, and then he also grabs the tank and does a bunch of damage to the tank and then throws them at somebody and then they take damage. So that can be really useful for keeping the tank alive. And then Shade of Xavius, he puts a dot. I forgot exactly what it's called. It's uh, feed on the weak. So he puts that on a random player and then they need to be healed for five seconds so that that can be really useful there. That way, when you're swift mending them, you're not getting rid of a hot that they have. You're keeping it on them. Um, and then there's also some other dungeons where it can be useful. Um, so that's just one of the talents that you can kind of play around with. And if you find yourself struggling to keep, you know, one player alive when they need burst healing, then maybe consider Verdant Infusion. Otherwise, Flourish is the fine default option. Again, you don't have to swap any of these talents. You can just use the default build and do all of the dungeons perfectly fine up to like pretty much title level keys. Um, but... Sometimes it can be fun to mess around with talents and just kind of figure out what you personally prefer or like if things, you know, are able to be swapped around for you. Um, let's see. 
I think other than this, it's kind of hard to take any other talents, but we could say, say we don't feel like we need the extra healing from Tree of Life, um, but we want a little bit more maybe single target throughput. Um, you can take talents off like Cultivation, um, which makes it to where when someone gets below 60% health, it puts a hot on them, which can be really useful. But if dungeon there's dungeons where people are just getting one, like flat out one shot and you need more externals or something like that, you could either take this point out of cultivation or even um, budding leaves. And you could instead put it into improved iron bark. Uh, usually you just take improved iron bark just to reduce the cooldown of it. So you can basically press it more often and have it available as one of those things that you kind of rotate on people to help keep them alive. I don't think the stone bark is that useful. Again, it can be useful on those dungeons where like one person needs single target healing for an extended period of time, like we mentioned, but that's where I feel like you would just take Verdant Infusion. But maybe if you want Flourish still, but you also want that ability, then maybe this would be a good option. But even then, I feel like the reduced cooldown uh, helps a bit more because then it's available more often. So those are pretty much uh, the talents that I would swap around. I don't think I would swap many more in the rest of Druid Tree, just with how our tier set works right now. We're kind of stuck into Grove Guardians and Wild Synthesis. Um, you can switch Convoke the Spirits for Tree of Life. Some people do like doing that because Tree of Life is just a bigger cooldown that does a lot more healing, and it's a lot longer of a duration. It's 30 seconds. So that can be useful for like tyrannical keys and stuff. But again, I feel like Convoke is just so powerful because it's a one minute cooldown and you can alternate it with Flourish, which is also a minute cooldown. So it just it plays into this play style where you're just every 30 seconds, you have a big healing cooldown to basically help you get through things where if you take Tree of Life, you're going to press it, do unlimited healing for 30 seconds. But the boss fight's going to last, you know, two, three, sometimes up to like six minutes on certain tyrannical keys. So it's only going to be useful, you know, for a quarter, not even maybe like a tenth of the fight, basically. Um, so I prefer Convoke, but this is another talent that, again, you can play around with depending on preference and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, I think that is pretty much it for uh, the talent tree. I hope this video was helpful. Let me know what you think about it. If you like me kind of going through the talent tree and explaining things. Uh, if I was talking too fast or anything, let me know so that if I do more of these for the other classes, um, I can be sure to provide better input on all that. So yeah, hope this was helpful. Let me know what you think. And uh, we'll see about these videos moving forward because I like kind of figuring out my own personal preferences in the talent trees and seeing what other people are running and then kind of learning how to play around and what we can do. Because at first I did not like these talent trees. I don't like the dra Dragonflight talent trees necessarily. Um, I know that's a hot take, but I preferred the Mist of Pandaria ones where we just had, you know, six simple options to pick from. And it was, they were all choice nodes. So it's just, you can make some swaps or adjustments here and there. But you definitely felt more locked into your choices. Um, so once you learn how to be a little bit more flexible with these trees, they're definitely more fun to play around with than the old talent trees. Uh, but it can just be overwhelming is basically all it is. It can, uh, it's a lot to look at and a lot to think about switching around and stuff. So yeah. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.